Mbappe and Martin Tyler. Well, Richard, John Gregory wanted to mention to me before the game uh, what had happened on Merseyside on November the 5th, 23 <laughs> years ago. And I have to say, I didn't remember straight away. And amazingly, the man he was talking about, Andy, didn't remember either, but you do now. I didn't remember it at all. No, it was quite a momentous moment, certainly for Villa. I was at Villa at the time. We went over to uh, just across Stanley Park there to Anfield. Uh, to a Liverpool side who had been unbeaten for 20 months and we, we won 2-1, it was a pretty good day. And who scored the two goals? Well, you've embarrassed me to say me, haven't you? <laughs> John Gregory was not embarrassed, I put out in his defence, to tell me that he was the non-playing substitute for Villa. Didn't need game. him that day. <laughs> Right, back to today and the, the team news and the change of personnel and playing pattern today for Everton. A switch to three at the back means a return for David Unsworth. And further forward down the left, a place in the Everton starting 11 for the first time for Gary Naismith, the latest Scott recruited Walter Smith. Alex Niako is ill, so Stephen Hughes comes into midfield. And there is a shortage of fully fit strikers here, so the versatile Dane Thomas Graveson is asked to support Kevin Campbell. Well, that was Walter's big dilemma, speaking to him beforehand. Did he keep four at the back and five in midfield that got them such a great result up at Newcastle? Or should they change? Go like for like, struggling at home to get points. They've decided to change it. So the emphasis is on Xavier, Weir and Unsworth to keep it tight at the back. They'll have to cope with pace and movement, you feel, when you see George and they build it up front. Not the physical presence of a Dion Dublin. So it's going to be about movement, about their ability to stop the runs. And Watson and Naismith have got a big job here. If they're going to get natural width ahead of the pitch, it's going to come from those areas. And I think being at home, it's important that Watson and Naismith play more like wingers than fullbacks today. Centre of the field, well, he's got three players that if they got on the ball, they're comfortable. Matt Pembridge, naturally left side, a good left foot, as is Stephen Hughes, but it's Paul Gascoigne that will command the attention. We saw him play superbly recently at Leicester, fabulous 90 minutes. I was speaking to Graham Sharp earlier, he says since then he's played equally as well in all the games he's taken part in. Great stuff for us if Paul Gascoigne plays well today again. And up front have been a problem for Walter, he's not quite sure what to do. Kevin Campbell, certainty, he picks himself almost. But what he's he said, Thomas Gravison, when we spoke to him a couple of weeks ago, he indicated he likes scoring goals, he likes getting forward. Walter has given him a chance today to get forward as often as possible to partner Campbell. An unproductive spell for Dion Dublin has cost the former England striker his place today. He's replaced by Gilles de Bilder, who's on a three-month loan from Sheffield Wednesday. So the Belgian makes his debut for Aston Villa. John Gregory's only change, but there is the option of David Ginola from the bench, who was out throughout October with a thigh strain. Well, this defensive unit of Villas is almost spun the pun set in stone now. They pick themselves almost every week. Um, they know each other, they play with each other. Their defensive record over their years has been excellent. I think it will be again this year. But if you're Everton, you want to push right and stone back and play them as much as they can as fullbacks. Test them there, because Villa do depend on those two to get forward to supply. If they don't get the wing backs forward, then the midfield trio really has to produce. And I think when you look at those, there's certainly, I think, greater originality and invention in the Everton trio. But in Watang and Taylor, they've got two people who will work the socks off, who will really dig in, make life difficult. And if Paul Merson can get on the ball enough, and against Sunderland, he didn't for me at home in the last game we saw Villa live. But if he gets on the ball away from home here, he can exploit them, undoubtedly. George and the Builder, it's a new partnership for Villa. Is it going? provide the answers to the questions about can they get enough goals, that's my one doubt about Villa, breaching the gap from top six to top three have they got the front two, whoever it might be Martin, to get them 20 to 40 goals between them a season Everton's only home win this season, back on August the 23rd and then Charlton played much of that match with ten men the Evertonians, still very loyal, but concerned that there might be that uh, recurring nightmare from the 90s around again. Those sapping struggles, successful though they all were, against relegation. The problem Walter Smith says about his team and is that they need consistency within a match. They played well in the first half of the Merseyside derby. Well, that was typical, then they fell away in the second. I think that's typical of having to chop and change a side. 
Do with, with personnel, Martin, but with systems as well. I think Walter would love to have a full... I mean, we spent an awful lot of yesterday talking about Leeds' problem. If you look carefully at Walter Smith, he's without a number of number of important players who would probably be in this team today. So he has had problems. He'd like to pick the same side, I'm sure, two or three games in a row, the same system, two or three games in a row. And I think when he can do that, I think you might find that the performances get a bit more consistent and better. Yes, Goff, Jeffers, Ferguson, Alexanderson. There, amongst the absentees. But rather like Leeds yesterday, Everton feel it's time to start straightening out a poor record against this weekend's opponents. Particular dismay about that FA Cup quarter-final here in February. Aston Villa, well, they're very hard to beat. Just four defeats in the Premiership in their last 33 games. And fifth place for the game in hand is their reward for a win today. It's the 5th of November. Will it be one to remember for Everton or Aston Villa? All will be revealed right after the break. Time then for Everton against Aston Villa, a Sky Sports production available in widescreen, Dolby surround sound, and it's interactive with the stats, highlights, full screen camera angles, player cam, and fan zone this season. That's for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. Well, the fog from the fireworks is clearing slowly, but uh, nevertheless, still not easy. Good luck, Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. <laughs> no fireworks without smoke, Richard. Some of football's most entertaining performers are on stage today. Paul Gascoigne has been earning rave reviews with Everton. Paul Merson has been rewarded with a new extended contract by Aston Villa. And waiting in the wings, the flamboyant Frenchman himself. Walter Smith's been here two and a half years, trying to bring some stability during times of financial stress for Everton. But no sooner does he get something into shape and uh, the factor disrupts it. He's had to chop and change so much recently. And today's lineup know that the uh, supporters are badly craving a home success. A slight doubt about Kevin Campbell this morning. Had a, a check on a groin strain, but happily, from the Everton point of view, he's fit to play. And here's the subject of a for the first 15 minutes here at Goodison Park. Well, it, was, it was Paul Gaspin pulled up pretty sharp there, Mark. That's not good news at all. He hasn't moved since he slid in in that attempted tackle. Hopefully, it's only just a knock. Yeah, he's, away. he's off and running now. He's okay. Answer. OK. Just caught in the face. Joe Well, Aston Villa were without Dion Dublin through uh, a good part of last season. They did uh, have a pretty successful run. Going to uh, cut their cloth a little differently. And they're well forward here with Gareth Barry. It's a spun back away the teenager. The build up. Yeah, the Villa fans below us, way to our left, thought it was. That was the noise. He's very, very close. This was a lovely break from Aston Villa. The builder does it, shapes to shoot, pulls it onto his right side. I think the goalkeeper might, might tell us he'd got that covered. He probably did pull your hand. But it was a pretty good break. Isn't it amazing? Three goals. The first three goals yesterday came because stupid free kicks were given away. And the attacking third, David Unsworth on the ball now, did that, Julian George, I'm into his back, no need to. And my goodness, he almost paid, I could see the opening goal. Stephen Watson, a jump ship from Aston Villa to come to Everton. And he's getting more regular first-team football since the transfer. Take more figure of uh, Abel Xavier at far post. Taylor gets a touch. Yeah, it's just like the Xavier. You couldn't imagine him stealing it on notice, could you? Well, 
will be an inquest, I think. Naismith, <laughs> who had a, an impressive start as a substitute at Newcastle, set up the winning goal at St James's Park a couple of weeks ago for Kevin Campbell. Scottish international from Hearts, where he did play for a while with David Weir. He has to go across here as Joe Chip comes forward and uh, completely slices his uh, attempted shot. Well, I haven't done brilliant in the mark. That was awful from Julian Joachim, I have to say. I don't know what he was trying. Obviously a shot, but he had good support. The head of Alpi, but Campbell couldn't control. And that's his threat, sorry, Joachim's mark. That's what DeBilder and him will look to do, is get down the sides in between the three big centre-backs that chosen at the heart of his defence. Jules de Builder, incidentally, scored in his last three Premiership appearances for Sheffield Wednesday, but I'm afraid the die was cast in their season by then. And it was a pretty uh, disappointing campaign for the Belgian as well as for his teammates. A chance to uh, rebuild his career in England. It's a strange situation for these two clubs, really. Everton have been uh, very active in the transfer market, players uh, in and out. Walter Smith. Uh, has been involved in more than 50 transfers of first team players in the two and a half years he's been here. But John Gregory is the uh, Villa purse strings well and truly tied up by Doug Ellis because the uh, uncertainty in this uh, European situation regarding the transfer system. There's no doubt the manager would like to uh, splash out some money to just pep up play further forward but to build as an option here on loan and he's uh, in that far corner there but penalized for a foul on Xavier well, I think if John Gregory again is, is going to make a push and he's going to have to look to the man in front of him there with a the hat and the glasses on his chairman um, to be spending a bit I think if ever this side needed strength in Martin that is up top you don't have to spend big at this level Douglas will be pleased to, to Douglas will be pleased to say that his manager is right behind him <laughs> Naismith. It's too high for Alpine Southgate there. But uh, sorted out the problem. Weir. Southgate heads it forward and beckons his teammates to come out as he does so. Weir sends it long. It'll be interesting to see how Gravison does as a supporting striker been used in all sorts of different positions in his short Everton career, including centre-back, differing roles in midfield. I thought it might come from a little bit deeper at the start of this match, Thomas Gravison, but he's played almost as a, a partner to Kevin Campbell at the moment. Jefferson, Ferguson are injured, Joe Maxmore and Danny Kadamatri are on the bench, but obviously not seen as Quite ready or right. So there they are, the two of them. A bit disappointed in their shoes that a player from another part of the team has been asked to, to go into that striking role. Maybe they will have their say later on today. Pembridge gets a touch, then Gareth Barry defending, sure to be named in Peter Taylor's England squad. him to be in there as well. Here's Unsworth, who had a short, rather notorious spell as an Aston Villa player. For family considerations. Intervened in the, in the move that he wanted back to Everton for a second spell here. It looks like they're going to load on top of Alan Wright. I think you can expect an awful lot of that, particularly when Paul Gerrard's got the ball marked now got set pieces, Steve Watson has just pushed right up, taking him as far back as he can, like they're going to angle it there, and if they do that, then they've got to get support for the knockdowns. Answorth. The builder might have been uh, ruled to have jumped in to David Answorth then. Certainly didn't have his eye on the ball at all. So it's a watching brief for Dion Dublin today. Towards what's 
Henderson that Andy was referring to. Here's Mus trying to impose himself. Asking too much even of Joji has considered his sprinting ability. See, and I think that's the first time that Paul Nelson's touched the ball in the game and almost eight minutes into it. Yeah, the second pass was a better one. Churchill is dispossessed by David Weir. A good record, Joe Chim, four in his last six appearances against Everton for Aston Villa. Yes. The builder, nicely done for Stone, who scored here in that FA Cup quarterfinal. Wate. Well, it was Watang there, wasn't he himself? <laughs> That's the kind of tackle we're used to seeing George Watang make, but Stephen Hughes had to be committed. Of course, the history with uh, Watang is uh, with Gascoigne. Mm. That was Aston Villa against Middlesbrough. And, uh, that, uh, wave of the arm by Gascoigne that actually did more damage to himself. Proved that George Watang has got a very strong jaw. So Stephen Lodge is the referee. There was a chance to play an advantage then. Really broken Gravison's way, but it's a free kick to Everton. Well, the game hasn't quite settled yet. What we've got here is a surface that is extremely lively. You look at the ball, watch the ball skipping over it, running over it. The importance of a good first touch today. Right. Going for tangling with the builder. They are. Aston Villa are a hard club to judge, really. They, their record is a one of consistency in their league placings at the end of the last five seasons or so. They've been up there in the top seven. As I said at the start, John Gregory can look back to last December 33 Premiership games, just four defeats. There is an extra step or two to be made. I bet they draw a lot, Martin. I think that's the thing for me about Villain. That's what we'll talk about. The next step is to get one of the top strikers if you can. It's Pembridge. I knew he could get some dip on that. Now that's what that's all about. Whatever side you're playing in or with, anyone who knocks a long ball up to your foot is going to contest that then. Second balls. Who's going to pick them up? Pembridge made it his. A little unlucky with a shot. Watek biting in. Steve Watson did well. And uh, Taylor. And uh, Gascoigne, it's a free kick Everton's way. Yeah, a little bit the same here, just pulling it shut. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, as you can see. Really been concentrating on his football, Paul Gascoigne. They've been telling us today he's often at the training ground till four o'clock. He's proudly the new Everton head tennis champion. <laughs> is a, a training exercise they take very seriously. Unsworth. So Watson. That's going waiting and, uh, and then picking a pass to Campbell. Steve Watson with a chance to get the cross in. Naismith got forward. Stephen Hughes coming around the back. It's the Naismith who, in the end, was attracted out to get to the ball rather than Hughes coming onto it. Might have been better placed. He needed to be told, Gary Naismith. Unsworth, the left of the back three for Walter Smith today. And they're going uh, like for like. Villa, whose formation rarely changes. Indeed, their team rarely changes.
hoping for a home debut today. Edan Tal, another of Everton's new recruits, Israeli international, had to wait a while for a work permit. He's now fully uh, on the strength. Gascoy moving away from Taylor, picking up with Gravison. Cambridge making a forward run into the feet of Campbell. All got a bit tight for Everton. Campbell uh, making it difficult for Southgate to clear initially and right as well. That's uh, encouraged the crowd. From the front. And Everton have got the ball back again in Aston Villa territory. Watson. Well, they wanted to cross it, you know, Martin earlier, but because. Kevin Campbell had been out there involved in the build-up. He looked up Steve Watson and the 18-yard box was totally empty of a blue shot. Had to take it on and dwell on it by a bit of time. Gravison. That's going to have it here. Didn't choose to do that. So this place won by Southgate. Lay Smith. recognise that Paul Gascoigne is in good form and needs to be uh, closed down wherever possible. Yeah, I think you might see Boateng with that responsibility rather than Merson. <laughs> we'll try and get Merson free and on the ball, but the other two have got to nearest person for the button Gascoigne quickly, you would think. possession from Everton, but nothing really in, in a threatening area so far. Answorth. Anderson with an arm up to indicate that he was uh, coming back and going to play the ball. Watson was moving forward from a legitimate position on that far side. Right. He's not able to uh, really uh, get a hold of the ball. Maybe a chance for Everton here. Southgate sliding in. The surface has taken the uh, rain well here in the northwest. High winds expected later on today. Taylor. Mercer. Comes off Unsworth. Hampton. Almost helped to build up Joe Chim and Answer in the end to sort it all out. Anderson furthest forward for Everton. And a mistake by Barry. Oh, well, that's a big given. As a, a foul by Gravison. He was a player, of course, who got sent off as a last man last week in the Merseyside derby, Andy. Well, that's going to be an interesting one. We're a long way away. But it looked initially it's a mistake, as you say, but does Gravison pull him first there? That's what Stephen Lodge says, but you can see that Gareth Barney's got a chunk of his shirt with the right hand. Blind side the referee, you have to admit. He was a fortunate young man. If it had been seen the other way, Aston Villa may well be reorganising to play with ten men. Here's Naismith. Hughes, the only Hughes here now, with Mark having moved to Blackburn. Yes, it would be uh, nice if Gascoigne and Merson were up against each other. <laughs> you play and then I play. Yeah. <laughs> well, in an ideal world, that would be fantastic for the neutral, but I don't think that John Gregg and Walter Smith would be planning it. Not in the harsh world of the Premiership. And uh, the results are all important for managers. The builder. Weir. Looking his way out of an awkward situation. Joe him buzzing around him annoyingly for the Everton defender. It's four years ago since Paul Gerrard made his premiership debut for Everton, but only in the last year or so has he made himself the regular goalkeeper. 
Gravison, Campbell in the centre, Naismith coming in as well. Kevin Campbell with goals in each of his last two games, getting back in the groove. That was ball of the match from Gascoigne so far, Martin has fizzed the ball into Gravison, edge of the box, was first class. And Gravison tries to fizz a shot. Could have gone wide, could have gone right. Gascoigne had made a forward run to the left of him. Decides to go and shoot here. It's ambitious, you can see he's been closed down. There was no real target for him to hit. The last couple of minutes, uh, Everton just started to find a bit of range with the passing. Where? Gravison. twice in the league this season. One of those defeats was here on Merseyside, despite a Steve Stone goal, they lost 3-1 to Liverpool. Michael Owen had a field day in that match. And of course, more recently, they were beaten despite playing well at Highbury. Here comes Steve Watson again, and uh, Alan Wright <laughs> got his head to it. Gravison. Oh, Alan Wright went up very, very early. I think he knows he's, he's going to get bombed today from this sort of ball. But you see how early he goes up, takes a little ride on the shoulders of Steve Watson. Everton can't be the first team to try and exploit the uh, lack of height of Alan Wright, and I'm sure he's got his own answers. He won't play as many games as he's done without that. Well over 250 now for Villa. Twenty minutes gone. Goal is at Goodison. Watson gets it from Gravis. Gascoigne. Incomplete triangle there for Everton. Merson. And for Southgate. Pembridge from the long, long range. Again, very ambitious, wasn't it? We just feel, the crowd feel it as well, Mark. There's just a little bit of Everton superiority at the moment. The passing's better, the control of the ball's better. Villa can't get control of it. And when they do, they're not keeping it for long enough. Watson. Running into traffic. Travers turned by the builder. He used his uh, body unfairly there. Stephen Lodge has given the free kick Everton's way. So where to take it? Gravison's gone to the right. Coming from the left, Naismith. Thank you, but very central position for oh, the uh, free kick. Everton didn't really try to change the angles too much. David James, no stranger to this ground, in his uh, time with Liverpool, Merseyside derbies, of course. Did give away the penalty that cost Aston Villa a place in the Worthington Cup in midweek. It's always hard for a goalkeeper when the team isn't scoring. <laughs> And mistakes are made and of course become that much more important. Well, at the moment, De Bilda and Joachim are having nothing to work on, Mark. Just scraps basically being fed awful long distances from back to front. It's in the opening quarter of this match as Julian Joachim received the ball, the kind of area you'd expect where he can exploit the three defenders. Apart from that, they've lived in scraps at the moment. And including that midweek cup tie against Manchester City that Villa have failed to score in three of the last four. They did get a couple against Charlton and won that game. 
Hughes. see the free kick like that well, it's almost inevitable that a yellow card is going to follow this is a similar position for Villa that uh, Everton had uh, with their free kick a couple of minutes ago nothing accrued from that different approach from Gareth Southgate in the first place a bit fortunate that they're uh, in a position for Merson to cross he was tight on uh, Stone as he was trying to set himself for a shot Gascoigne trying to get forward. The ball was played a bit too early. Gascoigne had his back turned. That's uh, how Everton are trying to work it with Steve Watson. Villa defended the second ball well, and they've broken it with four here. Merson couldn't uh, release it at the right time for Taylor. Yeah, that's a little bit of good defending from David Unsworth. He had to make sure they got that right. Or was the pass from Paul Merson delayed just a fraction too late? Bit of both, probably. But it's the first time in the match that Aston Villa have gotten Merson on the ball exactly where they would want him. Turned, running at the last three of Everton's defence. Garrison jumping into Barrett, with an arm up. Take the possession still for Everton. Got an awful lot of that centrally marked. There's not been a lot of activity at either end of the, this football pitch. An awful lot of this game's been played in the middle of it. Middle third, Everton trying to move now with Hughes. Tight back by Stone. That's optimistic from Unsworth. suggestion that Benfica are trying to take out Zabio back to Portuguese football. No firm offer. Everton tell us. Barry. It really was a hit and hope. Tonight, Sky Sports 3, Dundee against Hibernian from north of the border. Alec McLeish doing so well with the Edinburgh club tonight at 6. And Monday Night Football, Richard and Andy will be in the studio. Start at 7, Derby against West Ham, Alan and Trevor at uh, Pride Park. Sky Sports Extra and Sky Sports 1. Watek. David Weir deals with the cross, not turning her hair, and it's uh, forward rather wastefully after that by Watson. It's been a little bit like that the first half for me, a little bit of possession given away far too cheaply. Ball given against Bratting. We were rather spoiled yesterday morning at Ellen Road. <laughs> And I know a lot of Evertonians came up to me, and I'm sure to you, Andy, saying how much they enjoyed Liverpool's demise, but to, uh, to really complete the weekend, they want to see the, the blue side of Merseyside get three points here. That's what really matters. But, uh, really 
cracking game between Leeds and Liverpool. Mark Viduka's four goals, and I was just looking at the, the first player to score four goals in a Premiership game, actually happened here at Goodison Park. I don't think you'd guess. Efan Ekoku for Norwich City. Viduka, incidentally, the only player in the Premiership to score four when his team scored only four. Another four goal score, isn't it? They're nine all told now. From the bigger contributions from the team. There's a sense of frustration in one or two of the challenges. Stephen Lodge, who's been in the news, he was big enough to admit that his mistake it was a mistake to send off the Coventry goalkeeper Chris Kirkland. I think all credit to him for admitting that error. Video evidence that he's not allowed to see during the match. And Anthony Barnsley, a bit disappointed about the news from the uh, nationwide game that we uh, brought you earlier today. A late Wimbledon winner, Oakwell. So often when, when two teams play these systems with three at the back or five at the back, three in midfield, it does tend to cancel it out. And I think that's what's happening in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly would have been interesting if Walter Smith had kept four, five across the middle and one up top. It really would have asked the question of Villa's back three, for instance, do they just stay there, mark space, and then a player when he comes forward? Or, you know, sometimes mixes provide better feast. Yes, that's the way Everton played in the two previous games at Newcastle and at Liverpool. Fifteen minutes to go to half-time and uh, the Sky Digital Viewers, Channel 404, Paul Gascoigne is the subject of our player cap. Strong attempted pass by Ian Taylor. Campbell. Pembridge. Is that uh, arm out for Paul Gascoigne as it often is as he tries to keep his balance and hold off an opponent? Certainly catches our fight, isn't it? George Watang thinking, I know all about that arm. Probably it wasn't that, I think it was a left arm that he smashed against Watang's face. But as a style that Paul has had, to be fair to him, all of his career, as far as long as I can remember watching him play, he's always used his arms for protection. So it's a free kick to Villa. Aim towards Stoke. Watched by Naismith, who's trying to help it out. Plenty of grit and determination so far in the first third of the game. Maybe a little bit of shortage of guile. There's still time, plenty of it for that to change. Hughes. Naismith, just uh, concentrating on making sure he got a good foot to the ball in case uh, Alpine came in with a block. In fact, the block wasn't there, so the ball squirted forward to David James. There was a call to Unsworth to let it go, and that's what he did. It does give Aston Villa a chance just to squeeze Everton into the corner here. himself available and Everton get out and she does with a good touch Not from Graveson Campbell looked as though giving it away Mercer went down and nothing uh, wrong in the mind of the referee with that 
James Howard meet his wife at half time in the what stand reception. That's well, that was James a noise John Gray there, mate. Slip up. Half -time They've got a throw in exactly where Steve reception. Watson's got it. Villa have got a throw in at the far end of the pitch, what a yard off the Everton goal line, and they get out so easy and are now under pressure. Hughes. There's really no space for him to make that. Trojan slips. Weir. Villa pushing out. And right, pushing in. It's an easy decision now, isn't it? Yeah. That's going to take the free kick. Good climb by Alpine. Pembridge. Oh, and Watson. Possibly a surprise that the ball might pass the defender in front of him. He couldn't make contact. Love to get a goal today, Steve Watson. I wonder if he believed he was going to get it. I'm a bit like you there or not. I think as it drifted over Gareth Barry's head. He seemed to go in there with the thought, well, I'll make a gesture, but I don't think I'm really going to get there. There for Gascoigne, is it? Well, we know what the surface is like. We mentioned it before, and even dead balls. Just the groin there, you know. I think just as he went, the right groin. And seemed to reach down towards that area. Well, he's put together a run of matches, and he'd be reluctant to, uh, to concede straight away, but... There is obvious concern there. He doesn't look completely happy, I have to say. What? Bravison. Shimmy from Steve Watson. Bravison there to try and keep Everton on the front foot again. Standing, he's not a little shake of the head suggests it's not good for Walter Smith and Archie Knox. And that's a certain change, they're calling one of the substitutes back, Martin. Gascoigne has uh, participated in all the uh, Premiership games for Everton this season, starting 10 and being a substitute uh, twice, playing substitute twice early in the campaign. But it does look as though there might be a, a spell on the treatment table to come. Gravison. Merson. Pembridge in the work. Naismith. He's trying to make something happen in a, a progressive way, Gary Naismith, and the crowd taking to the young Scott. First time they've seen him here in Everton's colours. Looking at what Walter Smith was going to do, Mark made a couple of choices he could have made. He could have brought on a midfield player, and he's got Gemmo like for like, just bring him on. But I think Gravison's going to drop back into midfield, the most familiar role. That would be the obvious choice with Kadamathri partnering Kevin Campbell. And much like Julian Jochum, Kadamathri does offer pretty good pace, pretty direct pace, a threat in that way. And when he puts it all together like George, it can be a threat. Probably too many off days for the young man at the moment. And he almost made too good an impression when he first got in the team, and the expectations were maybe unrealistic. Here he is, Danny Kanamafri, on to Paul Gascoigne. Oh, what a pity. What a pity. Alpai's been so comfortable all game, and yet... First time he's faced with a bit of movement. Look at him lose Alpai so easily. And I just think he should have delivered. He just loses his footing like one or two have done. Touch unlucky. And with gas going off, Danny Kadamatri inherits the player camp. <laughs> oh, dropped over Southgate. It's a long way for Campbell to go, but uh, he just struck the back of his heel. 
Alpine. Stone. Here's Weir. Smith. Difficult ball that long one like that now, Matt, over the top because it's going to skip away. You can see the rain falling and surface getting more and more treacherous by the minute. with the way our players fitted in on the pitch and off it as well. And just when it looked as though he might be given a problem by Kadamatrik, he was able to deal with the situation. Pembridge. Nelson hasn't been able to impose himself so far. See, I think he's wrong here, Stephen Lodge. All right, Naismith, ball's here. I think he goes in and wins the ball. I think he's very, very unlucky. I think the referee gets that wrong. Oh, that's a poor decision. It's a yellow card against Gary Naismith. With just over five minutes to go to half time. Slick for the uh, intended pass and possession forfeited again. It's been rather a story of the first half, despite yeah. Everton's uh, attempts to assert themselves. Yeah, I think if you've got a pass anywhere, it's got to be to, to someone, Mark. You can lay a little pass with soft pass into space, but if you're fizzing it at someone, it's really got to be at them. Nice. Chasing back and challenging by Naismith again. It's all a bit central for Paul Merson, both to judge him and to build it. We're almost in his line of vision, rather than spreading wide. And Merson had to delay. And he was caught by pursuing Naismith, who again <laughs> didn't think anything of the consequences of mistiming the tackle. He didn't mistime it. Full control by Taylor. Full cost uh, for the corner, but Kadamatri didn't get it. Ricochet, goal kick. Well, I thought an awful lot of this game would be played centrally, and that certainly tells us so. Everton have been the better than that way. More possession, more pressure. Alan Wright, Good closing down by Gravison. And Barry was a little bit overconfident there, in shades of yesterday when Leeds and Liverpool defenders were culpable and were heavily punished. Whether Gareth Barry will survive this corner. <laughs> which is the first of the game. We must wait and see. We could have knocked the ball out of play. It's a uh, sensible thing to do. Instead, David Weir comes uh, forward for the ground. Xavier goes towards the near post. Weir! Good stop by David James. First real save that either goalkeeper's had to make. Well, if that's not straight at him, then David Weir scores. He decides to come, David James, and then backs away. And he can only react, I think, right above him. And I think if that ball's anywhere but where it was there, then Everton are celebrating the opening goal. 
Instead, they now consider another corner. Yeah. Trying to make his move again. Delivery was poor. From Hughes. <laughs> the advantage then. But it's only a momentary advantage because uh, Jeff Pettit, the assistant on the far side, who was flagging for the foul, then flagged for the ball going out. Well, there was no advantage here. See, that's you know, me, just bring it back, give the free kick. There's uh, a damaged muscle at the top of the thigh for Paul Gascoigne. Treating it with a, a nice pack. Joe Chip. Xavier, who has been booked. Be right with his judgment with that challenge. That a, the impulsive challenge in by Watson. That defensive header by David Unsworth. Backed by Boateng. Xavier. Over his own bar. To the Gladys Street end. Well, it's been an extremely strange first half for Villa. They had a bit of pressure in the opening two minutes. They've had virtually nothing since then. And in the last minute of normal time at the end of the first half, they have. Well, I can only think of the second real bout of pressure on the Everton goal. Everton threatening with a corner. At the other end. Mason takes this one. Comes out for Southgate. Didn't fancy the left footed volley. I don't blame him. The ball was dropping. And his uh, attempt at a touch pass didn't come off either. Two extra minutes. The referee has indicated that there will be two minutes of time added on to be played in this half. Gravis. Chase for Kanamatri, but not much of one. And as soon as it as soon as it hits the ground, it's away, isn't it? Where? Stone looking it forward past Gravison. Down. As they move towards the final third, Aston Villa this time. Both sides have been guilty of that. Everton playing under the pressure. They've only won once in their last eight games in the league in Worthington Cup. And that was an away win. So more than two months since their last top three points at home in the Premiership. They are so good at drawing the sting, and John Gregory will hope for more productivity and attack in the second half. James comes out and a fine defensive header from him. Pembridge. Nothing wide. Now Merson trying to use the full width of the pitch. With, uh, Alan Wright for company. For Merson again. Where's the defender? Merson goes down. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. He is furious. Well, I don't think Paul Merson goes down here, Mark, for no reason. It's a lovely run from him. When he's past, we are there. Uh, there's a tangle of legs. I think you can see that much. Watch closely as the legs come together. There you see it there. Now, I think it's a big decision. I don't think it's a what you would call a cast-iron one, but you can see why Merson was upset. Well, a little bit of contention at the end of a first half, which has been distinctly short on goalmouth incident. Shield Builder with an early shot. Paul Merson with this a penalty claim late on. David Weir for Everton that James turned this over the bar. That's pretty much the story of a goalless first half. The city We've got something to talk about now, was it or wasn't it? We'll get the thoughts of Steve Bruce and Steve McMahon when we come back. No fireworks yet at Goodison Park. It's goalless at half-time. The analysis is next.
next Saturday. The number one contender. I am the warrior. David Tua will be set loose. I'm the undisputed champion. Against the all-conquering Lennox Lewis. Nobody takes my crown. The power. Nobody. The fury. It is my destiny. Who will be left standing? You want it? I am the one. Come and get it. Lewis V. Tua, next Saturday at 10 on Sky Box Office. You can order this event for $11.95 using your digital remote control 48 hours before it starts. See Channel 770 for ordering information. This is one way to get on the internet. Buy a PC, oh. get a keyboard, put it all together, get some CD-ROMs, not forgetting a large instruction manual. And this is another way to get on the internet, a Bush Internet TV. Simply plug it in, click the yellow button, sign in, and you're on the net. And all for around £170. Bush Internet TV, the set with the net. Can we still drive our cars and have cleaner air? We think so. Today, BP is improving air quality in 50 major cities around the world and across the UK by introducing cleaner burning petrol and diesel fuels. It's not an end to the problem, but the solution has to start somewhere. BP. With Lycos, once you've found what you're looking for on the net, you can share it with a friend using Lycos's free SMS service. FIFA 2001, EA Sports, it's in the game. Fed up you can't find a husband, or fed up you already have? Don't worry, have a McFlurry. The new Amstrad e-mailer is the simple and cheap way to send email from your home phone. You can send SMS text messages to mobile phones too. There's no logging on. It's as simple as making a phone call. At just 79, it's a must for every home. The Amstrad e-mailer, getting Britain emailing. What if your prepaid mobile phone only gives you off-peak calls when you're at work? What if you do most of your talking during peak rate time? Yeah. Orange Just Talk is the only prepay to give off-peak calls at times that suit you. To join Orange, call 0800 80 10 80. There's no eek in our off-peak. If you work together like we do and join others on the net to shop as a group, you could make big savings on anything from toys to computers. He always loved a good kickabout, that one. Let's do it. Let's buy it, dot com. Argos. Brighter prices, brighter Christmas. later today from Scotland it's Dundee against Hibs who of course are pushing Celtic hard in the Scottish Premier League Celtic player Kilmarnock our live game 
starts at 6 o'clock, Sun Sky Sports 3. And Rio Vallecano play Valladolid 6.30 on Sky Sports Extra. No goals. Seven attempts in total. Everton have hit the target twice, but has not taken off just yet. Stephen Barn and Steve Bruce are with us here this afternoon, and we have a decision from our panel on whether that was a penalty or not. For Stephen Barn, it was. For Steve Bruce, it wasn't. Here it is, chaps. Have a chat. No, I don't think he's. Uh, I don't think there's an intent. I think there's a, a tangle of the legs, but I don't think there's any intent there. I think they've, they've both just stumbled over. He's gone down. It's, it's, it's in the, I think the timing of it, that's why he hasn't given Would have been in, deep into injury time in the first half. I think that swayed him to think, hang on a minute, if I give this, I'm going to get hammered. It's a, it's a penalty for me. Well, I tend to disagree. I wouldn't say it's a penalty. <laughs> but why, then is again, it then? why is it for you? He's caught him. He's in on goal. But was there any intent as he caught him? Was it, as Andy said, a tangle of legs? Um, he's still gone down. He's still gone down. Whether you can't give a penalty every time a player goes down, though, can you? No, but if you're being caught, he's being clipped, doesn't he? There's contact being made. Whether it's a tangle of legs, it doesn't really matter. Contact has been made, and he's gone, he's gone to ground. Crucially, then, why wasn't it a penalty for you? Well, I didn't think there was any intent. And looking at the defender there, he's, he's just ran over, and, he's, and they've both tangled in their legs, and they've both gone over. Anything else Steve see. said because it was he's, He hasn't half. stuck out a leg or anything like that. He's yeah, just he's run. just seen his left leg. Come, come That's out. when he was running, I thought. No. Well, it was, Come anyway. also again, or? Anything about Steve said because it was so late in the half, was it not given? Well, I think that's possibly a, you know, there's ten seconds to go before half time and a big critical decision to be made. But for me, I think there was there was enough doubt not to give it. But that's only my opinion, of course. Steve thinks that he doesn't want any controversy, does he? The referee coming to ten seconds before the break. But he might also believe that that wasn't a penalty, which is why he didn't give it. Well, quite possibly. But in hindsight, we, we, we've got the, the, the cameras again, haven't we, to see it. But even initially, I'm saying penalty. He's got to give that. Yes, you did, to be fair. One of the two attempts that we've seen hit the target, the header from Weir. That was a good header, wasn't it? Great header, but it's right down his throat, basically, isn't it? If he doesn't save that, then you're going to ask questions. A hard man. I thought it was a good Thank shot. You. It is a good stop, but it's right at him. It's a great stop. Sorry, Rich, it's a great save. <laughs> Fantastic save. <Yeah. laughs> Let me pose the question Andy did. Anywhere else is it a goal? Yes. Yeah, he's got a good enough, uh, enough power on it, and if it goes either side, a yard either side, then I do think it goes in the net, yeah. But, uh, but it's a decent, he's got decent power on it. He's, well, it's the only shot on, or chance at goal. In truth, not seen. the best fare yet. How does it get better? Um, probably bringing Paul Merson on. At half time, I suppose. <laughs> it's been, been very poor, hasn't it? It has, yes. We need a couple of players to lighten it up a bit. You know, might, and sadly, look, what we've well. lost, haven't we, Gascoigne? Yeah, he's the one creative player who's, who was on there, and he, we've lost him with injury. I think both teams have just uh, nulled each other out completely, haven't they? It's all in the middle of the park. There is no real great width about it. There's no crosses coming into the box. I think somebody's got to do something of trying to get a bit of width into the game and for somebody to be able to, to create, what we're, which was sadly... How many times have we said that down the years? And the second half can be a totally different prospect. No goals yet at Goodison Park. Second half comes next. Imagine a world where everything is protected. The new look Citroen Zara is available with six airbags. Variable power assisted steering and ABS with electronic brake force distribution. Travel in a safer world.
Britain's most popular information service is also available on mobile phones, digital TV, and the internet. Teletext. Information for the nation. We all want to have a great time at Christmas. And Comet have loads of ways to keep everyone happy. How about this? A Fujitsu 1 gigahertz PC with DVD and software for under a thousand pounds. Its ultra quick processor means the kids can play games faster than ever. Kids of all ages. Yeah. Well, this sharp widescreen home entertainment system. With video and hi fi for under pounds, it's the ideal way to watch Christmas blockbusters. Have fun this Christmas. That's Comet Sense. Now you can try AOL for absolutely nothing. Just call 0800 237 237 for your completely free trial pack. Welcome back, everybody. Right now, Sharon, it's make your mind up time. <laughs> Is it to be? Number one, the Athletic Giles from Edinburgh. Or number two, the Tenacious Taurus from Dagenham. Or will it be number three, the delightful Dan from Canada? Having a choice is great, <coughs> but sometimes we all need a little help. Three! 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 three. 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 Chosen number three! <laughs> That's a honky dance from Canada! There you are, Sharon. Have a look. <laughs> like the Carphone Warehouse. Simple, impartial advice. The digit has always been involved in the business. But sometimes it's so hard to decide what to buy. So here's an idea from those useful people at Open. Why not browse through hundreds of great gift ideas? Maybe even treat yourself. Open. How very useful. Just press the button. At Blockbuster, we believe that everyone should be able to take home the film they want. Tonight, take home Scream 3. He's still out there, and he's still watching in the chilling climax to the Scream trilogy. And because we buy more copies than anyone else, you can get it now or rent it free next time. Blockbuster, bringing entertainment home. I'll have to break our transfer record to bring your Darren to United, Mr Nash. Oh, he is a class player. Terry, can I have a word? Not now. Sergeant. Tom, I'm on the phone. The biggest sign-in in this club's history. But this just came. OK, so your gas and electricity supply may not be that important. <laughs> but at Empower, we know you have a choice. So we're constantly working to lower your bills. The Saturday premiere with Siemens Mobile Phones. Bobby Boucher was one of a kind. And that's what I call high-quality a tool. Tormented and bullied by everyone. You've got to defend yourself. <laughs> Until one day, he was pushed too far. Damn. Play football for this team. From the director of The Wedding Singer. You are so sexy. Adam Sandler is the water boy. Saturday at 8 on Sky Premier. Lennox Lewis is back in the ring next Saturday night, defending his world titles against the formidable Samoan David Tua. It's the power against the fury. Night kicks off with five fights from Ireland, then it's off to Vegas for the American undercard, and of course, the big one, Britain's world heavyweight champ, Lennox Lewis against the number one contender, Tua. More information, call 08705 800 888, 08705 800 888. The night starts next Saturday at 10 and is live only on Sky Box Office on Sky Digital. No goals here yet today, Everton nil, Aston Villa nil, and in truth, not a great deal of hope in that first half that there might be, but as I said to you, Steve, how, how does it get better? What have they got to do in order to lift it? Um, someone's got to do a piece of, piece of magic, I think, to, to brighten the game up. I'd like to see Ginola maybe come on and, and give us a little bit. Um, you talked about Everton changing it today to match Villa. That's mm. what struggling teams do, you said. Might they be bold enough as the home side to change again to what they're more used no. to? I don't think they'll go, they'll go like for like. The way it is, they're quite happy the way things are going. OK, it's nil-nil, it's not the best game in the world, but it, it's a starter for them. Cadamastria well, thinks made a difference. They've already had to make one change because of Gascoigne going off, isn't it? So they've had to make one change, so I think they'll wait for a little bit. 
Um, certainly, Aston Villa is the uh, visiting team. I think they'll be quite happy as well. As the longer it goes, they might think, well, we can try and nick one. So I don't think there's but any might they be saying, changes. look, there's not too much of a threat here. If we just step this up a bit, we can pinch all three points. I think they'll, I think they'll be quite happy for the first 15, 20 minutes to let it go, look, let it go as it is, and then we might see an introduction of Ginola to try and win the game. If you were Walter, though, you'd be saying, hang on, these are sixth in the league. These could go fifth or something tonight if they beat us, and yet they're no great shakes. So get at them. You know, don't. don't the, the position in the league doesn't justify the team that's playing there today. It's time then for the second half of Everton against Aston Villa, a Sky Sports production available in widescreen, Dolby surround sound, and for Sky Digital viewers, it's interactive, the stats, highlights, full screen camera, player camera, of course, new for this season, fan zone, that's for Sky Digital viewers on channel 404. The wind and the rain has arrived, as John our match commentators Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Ian Taylor will be the subject of the player cam at the start of the second half. The Aston Villa midfield man. So Villa start the second half, hoping to extend this uh, extraordinary record against Everton. Seven wins and two draws in the last nine meetings. Including, of course, that FA Cup quarter-final here that... Took Aston Villa through to a Wembley semi-final back in February. I think another thing that's made it difficult, Mark, for the players today are conditions. Often sitting at home, it looks pretty good out there, but it's very, very windy. The pitch is very treacherous. A real premium on passing and possession, and well, both teams have struggled in that department this, this early evening. But I talked earlier about Villa, and you take Villa, for instance, and I mentioned how if you can push Steve Stone back and Alan Wright, how less of a threat they become. And I can't remember too often Steve Stone and Alan Wright, but in the last third... Hansworth defending for Everton. David Unsworth, if he hadn't decided to leave Aston Villa, Gareth Barry might still be a young player in the uh, junior ranks of Villa Park, instead of closing in on 100 first team appearances. It's number 98 today. He will be uh, 20 until early next year. He has taken his chance. Forward galloping by uh, Gary Naismith, and he's and Everton an early corner in the second period. Yeah, he's done it right, debut, home debut. He'll be pretty pleased, Gary Naismith, so far. Both Everton's efforts on target in the first half were headers from Campbell and Weir, but no one picked out by that corner. Gerard. I'm not surprised how few people ever actually put in there for that corner. Mark. They're four against two back around the halfway line. Which is a, a touch surprising to me. Weir keeping his eye on the ball. A miscue by Watson. Bowling over Hughes. He's worth having a look to see whether he can switch the play towards Steve Watson. He's moving uh, this time to keep it at closer order. Hughes. Campbell. Really stick for Kevin Campbell. Alpi able to do the defending rather easily. But it's Everton's throw. Get him a yellow card. More forward for Everton this time. It's a free kick. There's plenty of movement in there, isn't 
And James has missed it. Oh, like, did he finally get a little touch to it? Very well again. Certainly decided that it was uh, his ball to go for. Well, if he did, Martin, it was fingertips. Steve Watson coming in behind him. Frustrated. Oh, a good ball by Gravison, just away from Stephen Hughes. Pembridge. And tumbling by Taylor. Again, I'm a bit surprised, Matt. Sorry, I look back here, I've got a free kick in a good area. No Weir, no Xavier. But Watson's there. And with his uh, one eye on the ball, one eye on uh, Boateng. The weather worsening, as the forecasters have told us it would. Here's Katamata. Campbell. Who's he going to try and tee up here? Watson went to the wrong foot, really. Say the same about <laughs> Stephen Hughes as well. Yeah. Kevin Campbell will be disappointed. He knows his player. He knows Watson wants it right side. That wasn't a great set from him. They've started brightly, Evan. Forceful side in the first half, and forceful is quite the right word. And uh, wasn't the best 45 minutes we've uh, brought you on a Sunday. But winning is uh, what really matters to Everton. Methods, well, that can come later, really. It's the result at this stage of their season. They've only beaten Villa twice at home in the Premiership. Both those were 1 0 successes, and they take another one today. Katamatari. Campbell was never there for me for that. Two things, Campbell was too far adrift. You watch the position of Gareth Southgate here, so you imagine he's got to play it past Southgate. And with that position, he's never going to find Kevin Campbell. Jochip, Mercer. For Jochip. Gravison. Just the spread a little bit, but uh, and enough for Kanamatri to be one-on-one -on -one with Wright here. And Kevin Gravison. Oh, well, yeah, that's a free kick for me. And for 25,000 Evertonians. Well, it's simple, Alan Wright made absolutely no attempt to play the ball. All he did was block off Kevin Campbell. Kanamatri. Gravison, past Barry. That's a corner, Mark. Yeah, that's a corner, Mark. Just came off Barry, I thought. So did the linesman. Gravison in a pressure. hurry to take it. Up comes Xavier. And Weir. It's been a strong start to the second half by Walter Smith's men. Glanced away by Taylor. Unsworth. Gravison was actually standing and watching instead of anticipating. Well, this is it. You see Alan right there. That's absolutely no attempt. Looking at Kevin Campbell, not the ball. I think that's obstruction. Here's Campbell. Pembridge. Well, this has been the best eight minutes of the football match in terms of tempo, in terms of threat. Mainly, it has to be said, from Everton. Perhaps it might benefit Villa up as well, or if Walter Smith's side do start to push forward, take a chance or two, then maybe the movement, the pace of De Bilda and Joachim, they might start to find a little bit more space themselves. Back pass by uh, Naismith. Solid connection by Gerard and by Barry with the header. Xavier. Here's Boatek. <laughs> Quite sure what was in his mind there. Well, General is warming up, maybe he was aiming for him. <laughs> and I think it can't be long. I have to say, conditions the way they are today, his touch on the ball, General is. I think if he's fit enough, it'll be sooner rather than later if it stays like this, that John Gregory might just throw him on. 
play up front alongside one of the other two, a little free roll, get him on the ball. That could be the subject of the call. To Steve Harrison. about the builders' uh, lack of match fitness, so the message is going to Mark Delaney. <laughs> from the manager. You might just be a bit concerned about the pressure that they're under at the moment. You might be just stem that first and foremost before they try and win the game. Diminutive left back. Well, that's where you'd want it. If you're going to attack anybody along that back line, it would be Alan Wright back post. You'd fancy your chances. Not a great header from Danny Cadamatri, I have to say. Joe Call of the day from Paul Gerard there. No reason for David Weir to play that ball. We're having a little debate on it at the moment. Maybe. Helped on by Campbell. Much by Barry on the Kadamatari. Hughes. Short side for Unsworth. Naismith. <laughs> Slipping and sliding. Affecting the referee as well. Stephen Lodge uh, had a problem like that uh, in a match earlier this season. Uh, is that commentary? Yeah, that he was lost last his year. Tried, tried, yeah. tried to back heel and fell over. <laughs> no ball to blame this time. So, certainly southern conditions. Yeah. Even trickier for all involved. It was a tricky ball for Gareth Barry to deal with, but he met it with the that was required. Ravison to take the corner. Very good start, Mark. Second half. It's been 11, 12 minutes of constant Everton pressure. It's come off Steve Stone. And we're deciding to let it bounce. given the Villa's right. More plentiful Everton possession. What they want is a goal. they are two uh, match winners in the past. Morris Johnston right at the start of the Premiership and uh, Joe Parkinson four years ago, more than four years ago. Last time Everton beat Aston Villa anywhere. 1-0 win here, Parkinson's goal, May 96. Well, there is a change about the Villa, man. It is Mark Delaney. It's not a, an attacking change. It's a change that suggests that John Gregory's a touch worried about the amount of pressure I think that his team are under, unless they have an injury problem. Certainly, everyone looks pretty fit. What a... Delaney would uh, be expected to go into the position occupied by Steve Stone yeah. at the moment. Stone, of course, could play elsewhere in the team. Pembridge for Everton. Kept out oh, what a save. by James from Naismith, and Stone was the defender who uh, had a problem at that back post. Oh, what a save this is, Mark. This is absolutely stunning from David James. Pure reaction. He gets a little bit of good fortune, but my God, I think he deserves it. Great head from this. It's almost beyond the goalkeeper. How on earth he keeps this out? Well, I'm not so sure. Absolutely top quality from the big man. It stays at nil-nil. Steve Stone departs, though, and Mark Delaney is on. 
in that right wing back role for Aston Villa. Welsh international. Hasn't played too much this season because of injury. Right. Really, the moment of the match so far. Right yeah, that's a good one. I think that's more as much a combination of one or two that he's committed already today. George Watang. But Watson's away from him. I think there's. Well, that's one to the lads in the studio. Is that just a tangle of legs? Ala Paul Merson <laughs> first half. <laughs> Stirrer. <laughs> oh, I'll let the lads debate that game. <laughs> Yellow card for Boatek, free kick for Everton, taken by Gravison. Yep, that's not what's required from David. Apologise, his hand goes up. So soon after giving us the moment of the match so far, he's been uh, castigated for some mistakes. But, uh, he deserves plenty of praise for stopping Gary Naismith. Marking his home debut for Everton in his first start in the uh, first team here with a goal. Oh, Villa hanging on at the moment. There's really not a force in the other half of the pitch. It's, uh... it's not Gemmel getting ready for Everton. Now, this is going to be interesting for me as to what Everton do, Mark again. I know they've set up this system. Beautiful change of three centre backs. To put on another midfield player, Gravison. Cambridge just got to that. Barry. Merson. John Gregory would have hoped for a lot more from his team, although uh, they're away from home. And, uh, keeping the ball to start with. Certainly asking more questions of Everton than they've done so far. But they're still at 0 0. They relied on one spectacular save from the goalkeeper. The back three are usually so effective. Up by Southgate and Barrett. So it's Walter Smith who's taking a, a former Villa man, Steve Watson, off. He was another one who was a fitness doubt before the game. So there might be a little bit of injury in this as well. Change then, Martin. I wonder if that means that they're going to go in with a back four. Maybe try and get Scott Gemmel. Certainly, they could go there with Xavier Weir, Unsworth, and Naismith as a quartet. We've got two natural left footers in Pembridge and Hughes on the pitch. Gemmel bringing instructions, particularly to Gravison. I think it's a back four. I don't know what is changing it. So we'll let you know. Watting. Yeah. Right I think he was being obstructed there, and he probably was, but it was a kind of professional block off. Referee didn't detect. Hughes. Oh. Kevin Campbell wasn't anticipating that. They go back a fair way, those two, to Arsenal days. But they weren't on the same wavelength then. He might have gone on, you know. A lovely little break from Stephen Hughes. I thought he's got good quality, can strike. Mm. And they backed away and backed away. Villa players, no one really came to the ball. Delaney. The build up. Head again at the lack of supply. I love it, I've kept it pretty much the same. Gravison on the ball now is just filled in for Steve Watson. Thomas Gravison will now be under the scrutiny of the player cam. Sky Digital viewers and Channel 404. Campbell can't go for this one, he would have been flagged offside. Southgate. Everton and 
hear the discontent around the crowd. There's a no nonsense challenge there. Unsworth on the Delaney. Well, that was a clash. I mean, it was an accident waiting to happen. There's no doubt about that. As Mark Delaney pushed it past Gary Neesmith. You could see Unsworth set off. He was committed to the challenge. They were both committed to going for this ball. I mean, that is a tough challenge, Martin, and it's a hard challenge. But I don't think there was any malice in that from Winsworth. I mean, there's a little overreaction from the referee, you have to say. Because two players running at that speed towards the ball is going to be an inevitable clash. One clue to back you up is that the reaction of the other players. Yeah. Because uh, they would certainly have been more fired up if it had been seen by them as sinister. But it was certainly... Oh, look at the damage to Delaney. Yeah. I mean, I think it was, a, it was absolutely certain there was going to be impact. But I do think it was accidental. I mean, you can tell that's a, obviously a huge cut in his head there. I hope made contact with that, I'm not so sure. Stephen Lodge has uh, really delivered his verdict and he doesn't want to listen to any more debate about the matter. Coming up for you pretty shortly, Sky Sports 3, Dundee against the Hibernian from Scotland's Premier League. And our Monday night match is at Pride Park, Derby County, still searching for the winning formula against West Ham, who could do with a few more three-pointers and get up the table. Sky Sports 1, Sky Sports at 7. Tom Gregory down at touchline level. Sent on Mark Delaney, and now he's uh, going to see whether Delaney can carry on. Jim Walker, making sure he's okay, the young man. Dave oh, Watson just behind John Gregory there, who is still registered as a player by Everton, but uh, is much more on the coaching side of things these days. Henry starts with a Villa free kick, which isn't put to great use. Right. The builder. Campbell. Hasn't really been at his most powerful and potent today. Tied up well by Alpai, Turkish international, more than 50 caps. They just seem to have ridden that little storm, Aston Villa. Good pressure for the opening 15 minutes. Everton exerted on them at the beginning of this half. And that magnificent save from James kept it at 0-0. They now seem to be back in the game. Steady to ship. They might just think about pinching it. Worth above Shield the Builder, who's actually uh, lodging in the house vacated by the unlucky Luke Nillis, who's back in uh, Holland and Belgium recuperating. It's of course a big loss for Aston Villa after the uh, spectacular in his second game against Chelsea. Didn't survive the third. Merson. Joe Chim. Has it looked to be uh, a threatening partnership, Joe Chim and the Builder? but maybe their time will come in the last quarter of the game. Well, not a tap for them at all, that's why I think. I'm a little surprised that John Gregory hasn't taken David Jenner to go on another half an hour past approach in the last quarter of the match. One factor, of course, Paul Gascoigne's gone off with a sort of injury that David Jenner is just recovering from a damaged thigh muscle. Slippery conditions. Always easy, not ideal for comebacks. Jim is still watching and wondering whether he's going to be required. Well, you think if he's got a shot on Mark? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. He's also got tracksuit on as well. And that looks as though he could do with a bit more <laughs> to wear as well. 
Raindrops are falling on his head. Dear, dear, dear. <laughs> Did you see it? No. I haven't heard of it. I don't think. No, no, he sang it. I <laughs> sang it on the television. The Frenchman did anyway. No, but he had a go at it as well. <laughs> did he? Stars in his eyes. Oh, no. There for David Weir. Gravison. Xavier. 20 minutes. Everton can uh, get a win. It would uh, put some uh, smiles back around Goodison Park. Aston Villa, just the sort of side that you can see soaking up pressure and. Uh, Maybe finding one chance of their own to win the match. It is going to be decisive, it's going to happen. In the, the closing chapters. Barry. Fairly should have scored. I mean, they both do brilliantly to control it. And well, Kevin Campbell just steps out the way. David James commits himself. He plunges away to his left, and there's a little gap there for Naismith. And he couldn't find it. What a chance for Everton! What a run from Cadamatri. <laughs> just took them on on his own. By Answorth on the builder. Now Danny Kadamatri has to think about helping the defending here. Merson to take it. Touched away by Weir. Attempt at goal second half as yet. Everton's have started steadily risen. And Tal trying to have a, a clear view of things. Pleased about, it, except that Everton uh, haven't got uh, their noses in front here. Looking at striker, maybe of the caliber of their former player Graham Sharp, is now working again as the fans' liaison officer. Job he's just started recently on his 40th birthday. So maybe uh, life will not begin again, but 
will certainly get him back into the football world on a, a regular basis. He'll love that. And it is he then, Tal, who's coming on. The left-sided player, the Israeli international. Everton wanted to sign him in the summer. He hadn't played the right number of games, the right percentage of competitive internationals to satisfy the Department of Employment. But in the last uh, round of internationals, he actually got those statistics right. So uh, the work permit was granted. He's started the last two games, and he comes on now for David Unsworth. I think Villa are about to make a substitution as well. It's not going to be the mercurial Frenchman, I don't think, Mark. It's going to be Darius Vassell, I think, who's coming on, of course, as Gilles de Builder. And that's the Villa substitution, number 22, Darius Vassell. So, Vassell joins Joe Jim with just over 15 minutes to go. Campbell. Is tough. It comes for Gravison. And for Pembridge. Always uh, veering wide on the uh, other side of the ground, the really views were coming from. From this side, you could see it was not going to hit the target. Yeah, it's a nice clean strike. I mean, I think as you cuts across it slightly, never really threatening the goal. But with that change, what would have done, they've tucked Gary Naismith back into a, a centre-back role. See him contesting the header there. And he's been the one. You look at the two really good chances that they've had, it has been Naismith who's had them. Joe Chip. Watek comes out to right. Oh, it's fisted across and Taylor couldn't angle it goalwards. What happens when you don't score, you dominate a game, you can so easily concede one. Gravison didn't manage to get back after being upfield and Alan Wright. He's looking for a shot, isn't he? There's nothing more than that. Now, this has been typical for me of, of, of Villa, from what I've seen this season. Tough and stubborn and really difficult to break down. But because they adopt the five along the back like that, it does restrict them the other way. Lacking in goals and really in free play. Vassell has been sent on, hasn't yet scored in the Premiership. He's had mostly opportunities as a substitute, bits and pieces here and there. Very much a local product. Maybe on a treacherously wet pitch, a defensive slip. It'll give us a, a decisive outcome at Goodison Park today. Well, you think if we get one of those, Mark, it's going to be a match winner. I don't think it was a game that certainly I didn't arrive here expecting. The feast that we saw yesterday morning at Ellen Road, I thought this would be tight. I thought goals would be at a premium. That's the way it's... It in both goalkeeper and Everton striker are still down, and Stephen Lodge quite properly has stopped the game. Well, he was close, Kevin Campbell. And it was a teasing, tempting little ball fed in as it comes out here. So Stephen Hughes, Tal does a little bit of magic, works it there, and then just dinks this ball in. And he knows he's got to go for it, Kevin Campbell. He knows it's there. If he gets a touch to a goalkeeper already committed, and he's over, but David James again having decided to come, had to get them all. Ball and Campbell did that. It's good goalkeeping again. Well, they certainly spilt blood for the cause of other players. 
John Gregory doesn't seem to be overly concerned. Peter Enkelman played in the FA Cup quarter-final here. On the winning side for Aston Villa back in February. Paul Barron, the goalkeeping guru. Fuller Park, Steve Harrison on the right there. having to keep track of it all. And it'll be a bit, won't there? Long stoppage to Delaney. Long one here again. Plus bits and pieces. Kevin Campbell seems to be OK. He has to go back to the halfway line to come back on. Uh, David James will not be asked to do the same thing. You see, that's the lovely ball, it's just been fed in, it's asking Campbell to go after it, you can see the contact made there. Again, like the, the challenge on the far side, Mark, two players who are coming from the opposite directions, fully committed to trying to get the ball, the clash was inevitable. Oh, it's a bit of a mess. Has he given up his modelling days? <laughs> He certainly had some modelling days, didn't he? Mm. Flicked on by Vassell, but rather too straight. Inkelman still warming up. Campbell heads off. Barry. Remember. They would go to fifth in the table if they win this and with a game in hand. So there's plenty for them to play for. And we've stressed all afternoon the needs of Everton. Still ten minutes for a decisive goal. The last two seasons, in fact, this fixture, Goodison Park, Everton against Aston Villa, on both occasions has finished as a goalless draw. It would be a rather unhappy hat trick. Yeah, not this time yet. With Southgate. Uh, Southgate initially caught him in a possession. Got the ball back. Gemmel. That's a difficult one for the referee when that happens, Mark. You're trying to block a clearance. And basically, the defender kicks the sole of the front man's foot. Barry and Alpai going for the same ball. Delaney having to clear the lines for Aston Villa. Pembridge. Xavier. Katamartri. With Pembridge. Oh, coming on has given them some natural width on that left hand side, and that was a very probing cross, one of the best of the day. Oh, you're entitled to someone on the end of that one. Gamble, Gravison can turn here. Chance for Everton. Tal. What a chance for Gravison. If only he could have put in a cross with as much quality as Tal did from this side. That's a Fantastic ball, horrible for defenders. Exactly what you want as a front man. And then when Alan Wright goes to join in, of course he leaves Gravison totally spare. And that's a poor ball. That time they had two, three blue shirts in. Really, that's not good enough from Gravison. Should have fed it in better. And from uh, Joji. Where? Crossed into a missed kick by. Vassell with, thought he was foul. Aston Villa throw. Nice. 
blocking off on the Delaney. It's going to be a free kick to Villa, a chance to send Southgate forward. This would be a real smashing grab, this mark. They've offered virtually nothing as an attacking force today, Villa. No smash and no grab there. And there may be some space for Everton to hit on the break. Campbell. Kevin Campbell gets it back. And then we both looked to see where the towel was onside then, but the flag had stayed down. Joe Chip. Oh, Barry didn't see it. Gravison coming. In goes Mark Pembridge. Great stop again by James. Gemmell wins it back. That's sick. Can he cut him after it? Well, how frustrating for Everton that they find the goalkeeper in quite inspired form. That's great invention from Gravison. And having brought it down with his right foot on his left, I thought it's just over the goalkeeper into the net. It's a great block. Maybe Pembridge will think he should have done better. for Aston Villa but uh, will, I'm sure increase uh, John Gregory's agitation that the board won't spend money on a new player to maybe try and produce some better play in the area where you win matches, the goal scoring department well it'll be non-existent in that, to be honest Mark today and it will be four games out of five without a goal if they don't score in the four minutes or so that remains here. Four minutes plus maybe a hefty chunk of injury time. Well, when you look at those stats, and they do tell you everything about Villa, only Liverpool so far this season have scored more than one league goal against them. And yet, on the other end, not enough. so cheaply as well, didn't they? And yet, with the quality that Stephen Hughes has got, lovely left foot, I fully expected him to pick someone out there. Well, he was disappointed, David James, in midweek to, well, people say responsible, he did concede the free, free kick that led to the penalty. Infringement cost them a place in the Worthington Cup next round, but my goodness, he's more than made up for that today. That happened in the last minute, of course, yeah. so... Uh, <laughs> there's still a bit to endure for the goalkeeper, who has put his looks on the line today. It's just a bang forward by Barry, no one uh, able to catch that, but at least it's got... To Everton territory from Villa's point of view, and a chance for them to push up. Gravison has had several different roles today. <laughs> this is a striker, centre midfield when Gascoigne went off. It was a big loss for Everton, although, to their credit, they've been the side trying to win the game here. Maybe a Villa can still snatch it themselves. Up comes a Taylor. Delaney. Guateng. Still didn't really want it there. Delaney, all a bit tight. And it goes uh, out off Darius for Sell. frustrating nature of the game would all be forgotten by Everton if they could grab a decisive goal in these last few minutes at Goodison Park. Gravison. Cross 
for Tal. Lovely feed, wasn't it? So controlled, so composed. Pete Antal again, and he used uh, a hand in getting it down. Yeah, that was a horrible one, skipped off the surface. Oh, sped at him. A forlorn Frenchman. piece of improvisation that was absolutely nothing on for Merson he looks up sees him just off his line this has to be inch perfect this has to just scrape almost the underside of the bar it does all of that what an end to this match well you sometimes don't get what you deserve Everton will feel that's the case today they've absolutely dominated this football match only been the team that's looked like winning it. The first strike that a Villa player has put on the target on the 89th minute. minute. And Everton. We're into stoppage time. There will be five extra minutes. So I think they're trying to delay the taking of the free kick, knocking the ball away. Well, it hasn't been a game that uh, Paul Merson has taken by the scruff of its neck, as he's capable of doing. But, oh, my goodness. He's played around the edges, hasn't he? He was uh, literally around the edge. What a goal, I have to say. <laughs> what a strike. There are very few players could have achieved that. Few would have taken it on. We've heard all about this new football, but how it moves and how it troubles goalkeepers. Golden goal time, 89 minutes and 39 seconds. And that's here, the time of the goal, 89 minutes and 39 seconds. Well, in the 90th minute, you put your first shot on target. Nice and uh... Well, the sluggish is making his way towards the ball again. And he rolls it to the lane in the corner and the running down the clock routine. But Walter Smith might feel this is typical of uh, the way it's gone for Everton over the last five or six weeks. Uh, Force the issue here without putting on a scintillating display, and uh, it's hard to do when you're down in 15th place. They've uh, worked hard, grafted, despite the loss of Gascoigne, take much of the guile out of their midfield. And look the more likely winner, and here they are, well, a couple of minutes away from being losers. Gravison's throw, might not be over yet, bounced off the torso of Gareth uh, Southgate. Naismith. It's a free kick. Tal's in a hurry to get to the ball and... Uh, Everton send up as... Uh, as they feel it's right, not everybody, which is a bit of a surprise in these circumstances. It's another free kick, though. Villa dropping everyone back. Taken by Gravison, met by Mark Delaney. Gravison again. 
is down by Bruckton rather than out. Weir has tried to shift the ball to one side to get the shot away. Villa saw that coming. Just got to go back in and back in quickly, you feel. Needs to be quick there, Pembridge. Well, for Kadamatri to chase. We're in the fifth minute of time added on. Well, smash and grab seems a, a bit of an unfair description for a goal of <laughs> yeah. style of Merson. Well, certainly it's a goal worthy of winning any game, but in all honesty, Walter Smith said standing over there, Mark, absolutely amazed that his side are trailing in this match. You have to have a bit of sympathy with them. Kadamatri. Much like Leeds it many times yesterday, Martin. Villa hung in there and they were under, under the cosh. Defended in numbers, made life difficult. Of course, when you get a goalkeeper in the form of David James, has been in this second half this afternoon, two very, very big saves at important times in the match. Paul Merson, worthy of this new contract that he's earned with Aston Villa. Another dividend. And uh, it's unlikely, I would think, that the international call would come, although he's made himself available again after a self-imposed retirement from England. But it's certainly an international class goal right at the end of a disappointing game. And the other significance, the saves of David James, who perhaps has a, a bigger claim on being in the England party next week. He was certainly in the last group. He played well, but Merson won it. And how? Everton nil, Aston Villa one they're up to fifth place that's why we keep watching isn't it all the way to the end there's a lot more still to come tonight from sky sports on a miserable evening nothing else to do surely but lap up some terrific sport on one at 6 30 there's more live world cup rugby league scotland plays Samoa. it's followed at nine by all the weekend's goals and goals on sunday and at 11 it's the rugby league world cup center there's golf on sky sports two tonight next Day four of the Tour Championship, followed at ten by highlights of the fourth day of the Volvo Masters. On three, there's live football next from the Scottish Premier League, Dundee take on Hibs, and at nine, it's American football live, the is against the Kansas City Chiefs. And coming up on Sky Sports Extra tonight at half past six, there's the fourth of our live matches today from the Spanish League, it's Rea Vallecano against Valladolid. What a goal.